good evening everyone uh, welcome to ism sics up chapter under the able leadership of the leaders from the up which always uh, you know is centered in the politics and uh, is known for its uh, very well known universities uh, so we would like to go ahead and start with the installation of the up chapter first followed by the wonderful program uh, carried out by dr deepak mishra and dr dharmendra nath so without wasting much time i think i would like to have the pleasure of introducing our national team uh, so we have here with us dr amulya sahu uh, as we all know dr amulya sahu is the founder chairman of ism sics society and under his leadership i think it has grown so vast that in the last uh, uh, mega debate international webinar which we conducted we had nearly around 70 countries participated so uh, thank you dr sahu sir for uh, joining this webinar thank and you we, uh, we have our uh, chairman uh, dr jagannath boramani sir uh, so pleased to have you with us here today sir he is the is one of the first indian to start the topical sics way back in 1997 and uh, it's proud to have him as the chairman of our uh, ism sics national team welcome uh, jagannath sir thanks so and then we have uh, under the able leadership uh, dr devashish uh, batacharya dr devashish batacharya is the president of uh, ism sics society and uh, he is as we all know him uh, disha has made a way where uh, most of us should carry out the examples and emulate try to emulate it. and uh, we are pleased to have our uh, president of ism sics society dr devashish sir this webinar and uh, we also have another young dynamic smart man who is sitting in the car now and uh, is none other than our uh, vice chairman uh, dr parikshit gogote i know he doesn't like it telling it but i still <laughs> acknowledge him as the ips man of our uh, indian ophthalmology uh, sir you should say i am a good cataract surgeon that is what <laughs> is most <laughs> that most of uh, most of them are but that is some extra quality which i think uh, dr parikshit has an ever smiling personality and uh, he's a great academician and he's also the member scientific of uh, all india ophthalmic society so i welcome uh, dr parikshit sir to this uh, webinar <coughs> and then we have uh, dr satanshu mathur i think uh, um, he needs no introduction at all up so uh, i think he'll be joining in few minutes yeah, Prasi, to... dada. yeah. <laughs> yeah. hello sir Welcome. Hello, sir. Welcome. Hello, Devashi. Uh, Doctor Devashi sir has uh, joined. Uh, welcome, yeah. Devashi sir. I just introduce you to all our viewers, and uh, I again call him as my management guru. And I think uh, Doctor Deepak will be asking few words from him once the uh, seminar starts. And uh, so, Doctor Satanshu will be joining very soon, and myself, uh, Doctor Shrinivas Joshi, I'm the secretary of uh, ISM SICS National Chapter. And uh, I think Doctor Deepak Mishra needs no introduction, at least. Yeah. is a young dynamic and uh, ever smiling personality who with his great efforts who has uh, made this webinar possible uh, thank you dr deepak and uh, i think the chairperson dr dharmendra nath sir is here actually to be frank with you as the first person to log in into this webinar so that shows that age is just a number and how punctual he is uh, as seniority goes on the punctuality i think comes more and more that's how we juniors have to emulate from him thank you uh, thank you very welcome, much welcome uh, dr dhanesh nath sir and i welcome all thank the speakers uh, i think uh, uh, dr deepak will be introducing each thank one you. of them so with this i hand over to uh, dr deepak mishra and i hope you will all enjoy this webinar uh, thank you up you thank people you. are the leaders uh, not only politically also but also in ophthalmologically so i request you all to take it forward sure. thank you dr deepak thank you thank you dr srinivas for your wonderful introduction now i request uh, dr boramani sir to tell us few thing about our national chapter yeah can i share my screen yes sir yes can you see my screen yes sir yes yes, yes. okay uh, good evening all of you this is the installation of second team of up chapter the first team has already completed two years so this is now the new team taking over in up many new graduates and post graduates especially the pgs they keep asking what is this organization about what are the benefits of joining ism sics so this uh, presentation is a short presentation about ism sics what is the organization all about the organization was formed in 2005 almost 15 years back by the founder chairman dr amulya sahu 
the main purpose of this organization was to promote the skill of manual small instant cataract surgery and not suppress it to some corner of any components so this is also one of the prime surgery for cataract uh, surgery and till date we have more than 1500 life members of ism scs the launch was done in a scs workshop in mumbai in 28th august 2005 and in the same year there was a symposium of ism scs in china in 2007 there was a mega international event in malaysia this was a three days conference in malaysia then in the year 2008 there was a big conference in indonesia the crux of this conference is that the annual conference of the indonesian ophthalmological society and the singapore ophthalmological society was held under the aegis of ism scs then in the next year there are successively two three uh, symposia one was in egypt next one was in sweden and in philippine annual conference also one symposium was awarded to ism scs in the year 2013 uh, ism scs went to south africa for a workshop as well as conference and live surgeries we published uh, almost seven co- uh, journals of ism scs i was the first editor of journal of ism scs and very soon now we'll be launching the new journal of ism scs under the new editor in 2015 apacrs invited ism scs to conduct a uh, wet lab in apacrs con- conference in kuala lumpur then we started from 2015 onwards we started here holding the conferences this conference world conference uh, is being held every two years the first world conference was held in pune in 2015 jointly with pune ophthalmological society the attendance was more than 800 delegates then after two years in 2017 this was held jointly with arvind eye care systems in chennai this was also again three days mega event in the same conference ism scs enter into an agreement with health bc which is a big ngo in training of the uh, scs with the help of their unique simulator then in the last woc 2018 woc we conducted one instruction course on scs and in the same conference a panel satellite event was organized in barekar eye institute which was the scs training program and in that program dr professor barekar launched the book uh, published by ism scs the masters guideline of scs this was this is an e book we are continuously holding many cmes across the country at so many places and ismss has been awarded symposia in various uh, state as well as national and various conferences now 6 months back in kolkata we held our third uh, world conference dr devashish bhattacharya organized this conference and this was an excellent event three days event the attendance was more than 1000 delegates ismss has been given magic of ssss two major sessions in aoc in 2018 19 and 2020 and this has been given in hall a the biggest hall in the conference in the last woc conference also aios gave a full session to the scs surgeons of ism scs this was a virtual conference because of the covid pandemic now in the kolkata conference three major announcements were made professor ampon jangsarjit from thailand he announced the mid term conference in bangkok in november 2020 uh professor jagatram and professor ak jain from pgi chandigarh they announced the next world conference of ism scs in pgi chandigarh this will be in september 2021 and dr boni henderson from usa announced the next conference ccc 2023 2023 in us we have the presence in almost all the states this is a old slide of all the states of india plus there are more than uh, 12 international chapters across the world So these are the glimpses of uh, launching of the Egyptian chapter and the Bangladesh chapter of ISM SICS. Now, in the COVID pandemic, we have been uh, holding continuously webinars. We had uh, there were four international webinars. The attendance is almost touching or crossing nine thousand, and there are multiple state webinars being held. These are the, our forthcoming webinars in the span of one month. Now, the Maharashtra chapter is having a program on sixteenth, Haryana on nineteenth. Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, and Kerala in the pipeline. They are holding the conferences in October, and there will be two major events: the conference of Bangladesh chapter on 23rd October, and the ISMSI chapter of US is organizing a webinar on 24th October. 
So I request everyone to become member. You can take the screenshot. This is the website www.ismsics.com, and this is the link for membership. And if you want a discounted and bulk membership, you can contact Dr. Deepak Mishra, who will be telling you about the scheme. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your introduction. And as far as bulk membership is concerned, we are uh, now crossed the membership of hundred, and yeah. the current uh, membership fee is twelve hundred rupees per member. The otherwise, the actual membership fee is thirty five hundred rupees per member. But since uh, at the time of installation, we make uh, hundred around hundred new members. So. Uh, it's because of the central team that they offer us some uh, reduced prices for the uh, fee in the reduction to enhance our membership drive to us yeah congratulations for efforts thank you sir thank you now i would like to introduce my team in the up my screen is visible yes 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 thank you sir our team the main person of the team under which leadership we start is the uh, prof our chairman professor mk singh sir sir is the chief regional institute of ophthalmology and dean banaras hindu university if i will try to tell him for something or about him it, truly i required whole day because he is a, such a kind of person that we cannot tell him all the features or all the things or the personality which type of personality is carrying forward and guiding us for in one word i can only say he is a teacher of the teacher even three four executives of this present uh, up chapter is his student and then he he is under his supervision he is also my guide the also the guide of chairman scientific committee and many others sir with this regard i warm welcome you to uh, our as a chairman thank you thank you next is dr dharmendra nath sir he is the medical director in the agra eye center and also the vice president of up ophthalmic Association, welcome you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Deepa. Our vice president is uh, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Paul Sir. Dr. Nath. Yes, yes. Our vice president is uh, Dr. V. K. Paul Sir. He is professor in the National Institute of Ophthalmology at the Sita Pur Eye Hospital, Sita Pur. As we all know, since our childhood, that. i hospital means sitapur i hospital and he is also the training in charge of the cataract and sics at the sitapur i hospital welcome sir i am the secretary of this uh, up chapter and also the joint secretary of the uh, national chapter this is our scientific team our chairman is dr anil swasto he is the alumni of banaras hindu university bhu and the director of the rajai hospital gorakhpur welcome sir our co chairman dr sudhir sir need no introduction as his videos and everything is you can see on facebook daily almost and he is fond of doing lot of new things or trying new things in the surgery welcome sudhir sir sir is there another scientific committee member is dr nilma malhotra she is the professor and hod of srms medical college bareilly then dr bipin sahani sir again he is the person of the national you can see him everywhere during judging the paper and presenting posters i have seen him as a judge most of the time in the national event welcome bipin sir next scientific committee member is our dr jitend wahi he is the uh, phaco refractive surgeon at lucknow welcome wahi sir 
and dr richard sivastho he is the cataract and refractive sur surgeon at yes. varanasi sees sorry sir welcome sir and these two guys are the main bulk of our scientific committee who has helped us a lot in the membership drive dr uh, lokesh he is the hod rml medical college merit welcome dr lokesh and dr amit patel he is the head of the department of the ambedkar nagar medical college welcome dr Am amit and another one is the dr sarita agrawal ma'am is the professor and head at santosh medical college gajabad welcome ma'am and dr romi singh she is the consultant at center for site agra welcome dr romi now coming to our executive team our executive team also have eight members one is dr prakash gupta sir he is from jhansi welcome sir dr umang verma sir he is the phaco refractor then dr dharmen singh he is uh, from the raibareli and dr welcome dr dharmen singh and dr rajendra kumar bundela he is the head of the department tsm medical college lucknow welcome dr bundela and dr iram praveen she is from hyderabad welcome to you iram Thank you. Good and dr satyam gupta he is the consultant and practicing at the bareilly welcome dr satyam thank you sir and uh, another our executive members is uh, dr mayank mahajan he is again the consultant at center for site agra welcome dr mahajan yes, dr manish trivedi he is practicing uh, in his own clinic at the kanpur very active and dr smita agrawal she is also from the murada this is my executive and holding with this i would like to thank you all thank you sir deepak we can say you have got the best team from up and we believe that nk sir and up will take the sss exercise ss cs mm -hmm. to a new high right up thank you sir thank you for your team. kind words we are not doing much in ss at the national level so we want you to come forward and bring the up in, in the front line sure sir sure now i would like uh, devasis sir devasis sir is there or sir yeah yeah ji ah sir need your blessings on this, at this occasion yeah uh, many congratulations to the uh, new office bearers a very dynamic team which starts from none other, other than the professor testing and then uh, we have uh, uh, the ever energetic president uh, dr dharmendra nath and thank you, and, uh, thank you. Uh, ever energetic secretary uh, dr deepak ramishra so and uh, the, i was seeing the entire composure of the scientific committee and the executive committee which involves all the head of the departments of government private medical colleges small practices big practices and uh, of course corporate chains so it is an excellent gamut and wish all the best just to reinstate the concept of sics even today the total number of uh, implants that is 65000 cataracts 65 lakh cataract surgeries are done out of which 25 lakhs are pmma lenses so obviously they are sics and another 15 lakh lenses are hydrophilic lenses which is in the uh, price bracket of uh, say 2 300 rupees so i assume that 50% of the cataract surgeries in india are done by this method and uh, this uh, platform is to uphold uh, our pride and the people who practice and carry forward this uh, legacy there are many things that sics gives that it's a wonderful media to learn cataract surgery forwards it is uh, a surgery of bailout in difficult situations and it is also the chosen surgery for supra hard cataracts 
and it controls correct tree um, and operative astigmatism, which is Dr. Boramani's favorite. We will all be hearing it today. Again, many congratulations to the entire team. And uh, we have Chitrakoot, which does the highest number of SICS in the world. And of course, the entire UP state, there is a huge popularity and with such dynamic leadership, I'm definitely sure that we will have another two, three year, uh, two years of extremely active uh, ISMICS activity in Uttar Pradesh. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you, sir. That was very lovely put, sir. Lovely. Now I would like to uh, request uh, Amulya Sahu, sir, to say a few words. So I welcome the UP chapter to the family of ISMS ICS. As I could see that all the luminaries of uh, ophthalmologists you have got in your team, and uh, it's a very uh, inspiring team. I can see their positions and other things. They will be the inspiring the coming generation in a big way. I All that I want, Deepak, you know, with your energy is just on stimulating everybody and don't allow them to slack. Then it will really reach new height. You were telling only 30, 40 members. Now you have already crossed hundreds and 180 or something. Yes. Sir. So I have given you a target. You cross the Telangana and beat them. So it will not be difficult because uh, with this kind of mentors there, all the students will join the listing team. So wishing you all the best and uh, looking forward to a lot of interaction in future. This is a platform is for all those people who believe the art of cataract surgery and we are not discriminating against the FECO or anything. Let us become master surgeons. Let us learn everything. And that is our slogan. So if you are a master, you should know everything. Not a partial surgeon that I know FECO, I don't know SICS. That will not do. People are coming to you for the good eye surgery and you have must know those art and science of surgery so that you, people look up to you for better results, not for your machine. Thank you so much. Welcome you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, yeah. Dr. Sao, sir. Radipa, most of us in the UP chapter might not be knowing about Dr. Sao, sir. Yes, sir. He, he was the Dr. Sao who in 2005 started this society because from 1990 when I joined the SIPL was the backbone. And he was treated as a backward surgeon or SICS as a budget surgery. But in 2005, Dr. Sao made this society. And since 2020 now, we have seen SIC, I have seen SICS progressing fast. Now we can say, proudly say, we are SICS surgeon. We are doing SICS surgery. Many of us are doing charging more than the FACO surgery in India. So this man is because of his dedication, love and affection. I have joined. I am still with the SS society and this society has seen flourishing from few members to up to this 1,000 member now. Now we have chapters in, of, in almost all the states in India. Almost all the states, small states, bigger states, be everywhere. And we have got nine international chapters also. So we yes. really salute Dr. Tremendous 12 now international chapters. We salute Dr. South, sir, for his dedication, love, affection. And please keep guiding us, sir, in the future also. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now I request our uh, chairman, Professor M.K. Singh, sir, to say a few words. Thank you, Dr. Deepak. And uh, actually, I congratulate the International Society for having organized this program and launching of the UP chapter of International Society for the manual responses and cataract surgery. Dr. Deepak has used very nice words for me. But uh, really, I will tell you that once I came to know about this society from Dr. Deepak, I was amazed that really there exists a society for small incision cataracts. So he was, uh, he told me that when he visited the Calcutta and I inquired him, where you had gone? He told me that I had gone to attend the International Society for Small uh, Manual Incision Cataract Surgery. Okay. Is there a society for that? He told me, yes, that it is there are a lot of innovations, a lot of things are going on in the society. So I was really amazed because I prefer to be a small incision cataract surgeon. And I still feel that this is the type of surgery which is required in this country. 
in spite of so many you know innovations should take this no doubt uh, but at a very affordable cost you should always try you should always strive to come with a technique which can be affordable to the indian population and i still feel that the small incision cataract surgery manual small incision cataract surgery the preferred type of surgery which is required for the masses of this country and thank you for the organization organizers for giving us the opportunity to have this chapter in up and i hope under the leadership of dr deepak mishra dr dharmendra nath and so many other young persons this society will flourish we will regularly organize the symposia seminars and what are the researches are going on in this field we will try to get the advantage of this and the stakeholders the patients will be benefited immensely by our participation and innovations in this field of surgery thank you very much for and i have again express my sincere thanks and gratitude for giving me this opportunity to be the part of this society and i hope in days to come the, the society will flourish and it will attain a newer heights in the due course of time thank you very much thank you mk singh sir one two points sir i will want to make it the sics has come to a different level now see my friend uh, dr boramani is doing a wound mod modulation stigmatic free s sics and then we have a computer driven mm. computer software guided sics i am doing a 2 mm sics i expect a lot of research on that front and we are the world leaders and world is going to look up to us so with this i feel the all the mentors to start a research program with uh, so that sics goes to next level thank you so much certainly sir certainly thank you sir thank you sir now i request our president dr dharmendra nath sir to say few words thank you dr deepak and uh, i am really amazed and uh, very much uh, surprised to see stall words of sics into the same platform and i am really very much pleased that i have been associated uh, as a upt up chapter to the central and thank you very much to dr amulya sahu dr boramani dr gopte and of course my very dear satan sumathur and very very revered sir dr bhatta charya and sri nivas joshi and i have seen so many times that dr amulya sahu has done a wonderful job in innovations and regarding his 2 uh, mm surgery and last time uh, when i was there in aius i was watching his surgery it was mar marvelous and wonderful so uh, i th that's very true because most of the time what we see the most of the fake surgeons they are also trying whether they say or not but they just try sics also in their uh, i mean operation theater just because in every case they cannot do the fake 100% fake cannot be done in 100% cases so there are certain limitations there are certain restrictions are there so to do the fake surgery but of course sics is a technique which gets you out from so many difficult situations that's very true and here are uh, i mean I, i don't say that they are surgeons i will rather say they are philosophers and uh, they are really innovators they are scientists in doing their uh, i mean the uh, in sics like dr uh, bhattacharya gogte and boramani and dr of course dr mulya sahu they have done a wonderful job and they have uh, opened the up chapter definitely we will, we will never uh, 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 ask anyone to say any any evil words for uh, uh, for up chapter with the uh, with the uh, leadership under the leadership of dr uh, uh, deepak mishra and i am really very sure that my team uh, with the dr m k singh as the chairman and deepak mishra as the secretary and dr uh, dr paul dr anil srivastava of course dr uh, uh sudhir srivastav is there with us uh, to guide every step of my uh, team and the uh, scientific committee members i'm thankful to that and very learned as why the scientific committee i have and uh, of course the ict committee is also there very nice one so uh, i i think uh, everyone will please you uh, and they will not uh, create any kind of disappointment to the center body thank you very much for uh, opening the up chapter uh under the leadership of dr m k singh thank you sir thank you sir now uh, parikshit sir is there uh, 
परीक्षित सर ओके डॉक्टर श्रीनिवास योर वर्ड्स फॉर दिस चैप्टर Uh, I think Dr. Deepak, I have already uh, spoken initially. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fantastic thing which you people have brought in here. Uh, we are we are we are going to revamp this ISM SICS under the great leadership of uh, Dr. Sahu, Dr. Boramani, Dr. Devashish, and uh, Dr. Parikshit. Uh, and uh, the central team we have is none other than Dr. Satanshu Mathur and yourself being the joint secretary of the national team. What more can I say more about this team? So I am sure that. Uh, the full energy is on as dr dharmendra nath sir said and uh, dr dipati sir said it's a full energetic team which we are seeing and we see already 200 members now if i'm not yes. wrong uh, at the installation ceremony and i'm sure that uh, you people will uh, uh, take take it more forward and as dr satanshu said that the presence of the up like how it is politically with 80 seats i think with ism sics i'm sure that you people will really bang on on indian after <laughs> Technology and make it at its presence uh, a more uh, in, in a more larger picture. Uh, congratulations to the whole team, Dr. Pal sir, Dr. Dharmendra Nath sir, and Dr. Deepak Mishra ji, and all the young uh, torch bearers we have here. Which I'm seeing the smiles on their face. Uh, all the best. We are with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sir. Thank you. Boramani sir, your blessings. No, this is a fantastic team. It is an amalgamation combination of uh, private practitioners, small clinic, big setups. and mainly most of them are hods in various medical colleges so i think as far as the research and uh, innovations are concerned you will do a wonderful job and plus dr deepak mishra who was already secretary he is a most dynamic person i think in the up he will bind them together and they will do a wonderful job so i wish you all uh, best of luck thank, thank you, you sir thank you sir with these words uh, we would like to finish our installation ceremony now we move to the our cme part today dr dharmen nath sir and anil swasto sir will take uh, charge anil swasto sir is our chairman scientific committee anil sir i think he is having uh, some network problem i think uh, i think i think dr deepak mishra is the moderator yes you and me you and me along with chairman and co chairman of scientific yes, committee yes. Dr. Darwin <laughs> Nath sir and Dr. Sudhir Srivastava sir. Okay. Dr. Sudhir, you can take the charge of the scientific committee. Yeah, yeah I, okay. I'll help Dr. Darwin Nath, Nath sir. Okay. 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 So okay. as in, as we know that there are certain speakers, now I just name them chronologically. Dr. Deepak Mishra will uh, talk on SICS versus FACO, uh, the literature search and the tunnel making in SICS by Dr. Satyam Gupta. and nucleus management in sic as upen shahani making good rexes dr neelima mehrutra and sic as of eco surgeons sudhir shrivastav is a very good topic and the idea bought from india to poland dme steroid off label treatment by dr hazel and uh, this is hana petrus zack and chopping difficult faco by oscar van hamel and mics in by nath kanula is my own technique so these are the few speakers everyone is uh, supposed to be bind up within 6 minutes so i just asked dr deepak mishra uh, that uh, sics versus faco and literature search please dr deepak mishra thank you sir my slides are visible yes okay thank you sir since time is uh, very less there is no financial interest in it i am coming directly to the comparison or what basis i have search on the literature and what is the uh, document being the, what we have say which one is better which one is not or we have to learn both but we have to know what already published in the literature and what is available in the literature for that i have uh, taken few parameters uh, to compare both uh, msics and the faco and with these finds i would like to use my like everyone is using their own mind so here is the parameter first one is the time how much time uh, which surgery will take 
then the cost because already mm -hmm. whatever the procedure we are doing it should be the cost effective thing in the grades of cataract and post operative outcomes this is again a very important part because each and every time when you are going for the surgery uh, or your patient ask only one thing about his post operative recovery and things and this is the learning curve because most of the residents are there and uh, the teachers are there uh, with us which can guide their learning curve which one is having so based on these four five parameters i have searched i am going to tell you in few minutes about their meta analysis search what is going on published this is the article based on the time search and uh, we have one article published by dr venkates all i have chosen is the peer reviewed journals which is having good impact factor or the quality production and when we have compared the time between the feco and the sics then venkates et al found that it is feco taking slightly less time how ever others are saying that sics is taking less time one of the article is uh, by our vice chairman dr parikshit bogte et al so when we compare so there is initially there is lot of hassle i think that this is taking less time this is taking more time but based on this literature search i can say both is taking almost the same time in the expert hand you cannot compare the timing with the beginner that once making tunnel is taking more time or like that there are many type of myth associated with sics so i am saying that when we go for that in the expert hand then almost feco and sics will take same time next is the cost effectivity cost effectivity yes it's very important that whatever the machine uh, is required please so uh, feco machine okay. you know everyone is too okay. much costly and when you are please. invested so much amount in your machine or whatever then then indirectly the cost will be reflected on the patient so there is one disadvantage that feco is slightly uh, set up is costly costly than the sics and again when i compare this uh, literature i have chosen all the literature because sics is the gift of from the india to the world almost i can say when we have compare all these articles and we find out that yes sics setup and the cost as mk singh sir already mentioned that you have to think about the society of the normal public population of the india to uh, where we can what we are giving with low cost and at best quality so here you can find out that sics is having better when we compare both in terms of cost and these are the few studies published uh, in the good journals which already said that the rate or the costing in the sics is almost 30 to 67 one thing i would like to mention why this is so much range from 30 to 67 that is because like the boramani sir or the amulya sau focus so this rate is depends upon the type of lens you can if you are using the lenses multifocal lenses then the cost of lens is same you cannot say anything that is the thing only you can reduce is the costing of the your feco machine so if you are using the good lens in the sics2 or the multifocal then its cost will be higher as compared to the normal and when grade of cataract is concerned we all know there is no dispute on it that mics can be done in the all grades of the cataract however feco is preferably avoided in the higher grade because these type of grade black cataract almost uh, and 4 5 it is difficult to do feco and same thing is reflected in the literature too i have searched not only one but almost the 10 literature search and the highest number of the candidates are the subjects in the literature published in jcrs by dr hari priya arvin according to the arvin the study is in high volume and Hello. high quality dr. Uh, can you join is, the meeting please meeting is, is better 
in uh, all types of all okay. bits of the cut rate. Right? Okay. When the post-operative vision is concerned, these okay. are the few okay. metal analysis. Just, uh, Again, I am comparing that. If you can okay. compare, it's, then there is no difference in the best corrected visual acuity of six by eighteen. You can see this uh, diamond, and in both cases, all uh, one side is ICS, another side is Teco. All comes into the same diamond range. It means there is statistically no difference between the best corrected visual acuity of six by eighteen in SICS and FECO. And again, when you can see this is the uh, best corrected visual acuity up to the six nine in both surgeries. You can find out again. This is slightly at the margin of the diamond in SICS, but again there is no statistical difference between the SICS and FECO when we are doing uncorrected visual acuity of six by nine in the expert hand. But ha, yes, there are various studies. One is by the our uh, executive chairman uh, Bora Mani sir and. Uh, Gotke sir, that SICS in 46% of the SICS near vision is better as compared to FECO in the 16%. So this unadded visual acuity of slightly less efficient visual acuity favors in the near vision, which at the age of 60 or 70 is much more beneficial for the patient. When we compare the astigmatism, yes, there is no doubt that FECO is. Having less astigmatism than the SICS, but these are the modifications, different types of incisions and the modification nowadays. All SICS surgeons are doing, and with slightly modification in the in their incision size, you can control the astigmatism too. But I can say that FECO is having a smaller astigmatism. Endothelial loss is one of the important uh, parameter in uh, post-operative outcome, and when we compare, then we can find out that in this is the endothelial loss. You can find out the focal endothelial burn in the cases of FECO. However, in SICS, you can find out less endothelial loss. So, endothelial loss or the benefit of the cornea where the endothelial is already compromised or anything, I think SICS is much better than the FECO. And this is the learning curve of both technique. SICS will take some time, but very soon you become a expert or the stable surgeon. But while in case of FECO, there is a long learning curve with unpredicted because once you change the machine, a type of machine or different, then learning curve will also fluctuated in both. At the end of conclusion, I am not saying anyone is better or anyone is worse. But I am saying only one thing: astigmatism is the only point where a good SICS surgeon slightly like the FECO, but rest all the places SICS and FECO is almost comparable. Thank you, thank you, sir. Deepak, sir, uh, astigmatism. What was done in the research has been done very long back. Now. Yes, sir. I am doing so much of multifocal. Even Bhagavani is doing so many multifocal. We don't get any astigmatism. I am operating on the steep axis, so also Bhagavani is moon modification and this astigmatism. We are going to have a mega comparison uh, shortly, and you will see that we are doing much much better than FECO surgeon because they have a limitation about the steep axis thing, yes. but we don't have any limitation. Any so, I know okay. the facts, sir, but uh, these are the things. Yeah, I know there is literature uh, not available. Such, I cannot uh, say my own yeah. <laughs> experiences because last study as you presented is 2012. 12, sir. Yes, sir. After okay. that, okay. even I would like to listen uh, the lecture by the Bora Mani sir of the managing astigmatism most of the time, and it's really nice. In fact, that's why nowadays we call it is a small incision customized surgery, yes, or not a thousand or something. Small incision customized surgery because we can control the estimate by the incision. Okay, sir. Okay. Our next speaker, sir, Dharmendra Nath sir is moved. So, yes, sir, you can call our next speaker. 
You can start, Doctor uh, Doctor uh, Satyam Gupta. He'll be speaking on uh, wood construction in MCS. Are my slides uh, visible? Yeah, yes, yeah, so your slides are visible. I am audible, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, good evening, everyone. My today's topic of discussion is wound construction in manual small incision cataract surgery. Small incision cataract surgery in itself carries the word incision, which gives it a versatility of being an open as well as a closed chamber surgery. On pressing the lower lip of the incision, chamber opens, and on lifting the upper lip, chamber closes. I'll be delivering my entire talk to the video only. It's important to note that the conjunctiva and tenons are fused at the limbus. So to grab them together a little behind the limbus. The two are then separated from the sclera by blade opening action. A narrow rim of conjunctiva left at the ends for better stabilization of the globe during surgery and for cauterization at the end of the surgery. During cautery, it is better not to char the scleral bed and to spar the perforating vessels. This round shaped incision should lie in the cox astigmatic funnel. Incision should always be marked with the crescent knife to assess its depth. The side should be made following the contour of the eyeball. Square incision geometry should be the principle of side port entry. Tilting the eyeball downwards will facilitate the entry of keratome and again pulling it backwards will help to create a corneal dimple. Keratome should always move forward and laterally while entering the AC. No surgeon is a good surgeon without landing up complications. This leads to poor scleral exposure and visualization. In this case, since chemosis is the cause of travel milking is done, maintenance is recognized. Włączamy głos, oni się, co, się tam chodzą, a ja muszę jeszcze... Jak jest pan rajzy, bo Dostępnie to ja już to będę umieć, to ty to jedziesz. Tylko powiedz mi, aha, czyli jak, jak, jak ja się połączyłam, to on widzi, widzi że ja jestem. Nie? Mute, mute others. With the difficulty in carnal construction. And while making the same incision, we have to be very sure about the corneal plane. Aha, ja chyba, aha, kamerkę w ogóle mi nie widać, bo widać to, co jest, to ja jestem Hanna Zenspytu, że jest, ale bez kamerki, tak? Bo kamerka jest host, tylko... Host, please uh, mute the uh, microphone. You can see the wrinkling in the... To wiesz co, dobra, to na razie jak mnie nie woła, to, a ty możesz sobie było... Now we are to make it the correct name. To that, it can be made. And it can maintain its world record. No, we cannot. Uh, uh, internet, uh, 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 ale jeżeli... A, no dobra, dobra. 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 Dobra, Future it matters. Similar scenario. 
first is reducing the liquid pressure by deflating it helps to deposit back the uveal tissue and second is a single central box suture might not be sufficient to secure the section ale żeby on nie widział, ja mogę dać to na pasek, rozumiesz to, żeby to mi się schowało, żebym ja pokazała to. Ale jak ja mam, aha, mam, 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 przepraszam, bo nie widzi, zobaczyłam tutaj. Uh, Mr. Rahul is there. At the corneal part. Ja wiem, ale słuchaj, bo ja dała, teraz kliknęłam, nie, dobra, nie wiem, bo jak ja mam to zminimalizować, cholera. To nie wychodzić, tylko zminimalizować. Dr. Hanna, Dr. Hanna. Dr. Hanna. No chyba przez safari, tak. Dr. Hanna, can you, can you mute your, yes, yes, it's okay. It's a forceful movement of the crescent blade, rather than the wriggling and sweeping movement. We always need to follow and dissect the plane in a single go. We don't need to make multiple planes. In this case, the entry is premature as well as incomplete and the blade is being drifted sideways only without any forward movement. Here, in spite of proper entry, the blade is cutting backwards and laterally since the cut is made while withdrawing the blade. In both of the above complications, there would be post-operative hypema, hypotony due to leaking wound and significant post-operative in stigmatism. The simple way is to move the keratome forwards and laterally. This tunnel appears to be of appropriate size, but it is not so. Thus, whenever you are dealing with hard and large cataracts, always check the size of the inner entry. And if found small, it should be extended under the visco cover. And then you have done it and delivered the nucleus safely. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dr. Dhanbinath, sir. Sir, unmute your, unmute your mic, please, sir. Uh, so, Dr. Sudhir Srivastu, just carry on further. You ask uh, Dr. Vipin Shahani to come. Okay. Uh, yes. So, now, uh, next, uh, because uh, SI is very interesting for uh, all of us, because uh, personally, myself, I am doing more of FACO and I am more of a uh, FACO surgeon. But uh, listening, how, to, uh, how the septum has managed the uh, incision, because incision is the most important part uh, for SICS SI surgery. And obviously, the nucleus management is again very difficult, part, and especially as a FACO surgeon, because if the nucleus is hard or black attract, then we have to manage it. To the, we cannot do FACO in such cases. So I'll just talk to Dr. Sani, sir, uh, to... Uh, speak and present some good videos or talk about the nucleus management uh, in SICS. Over to you, Dr. Pipin Sani, sir. Thank you, Sudhir. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Deepak, Sutanshu, and Dharmen, sir, for inviting me to give a talk here. I'll be presenting nucleus management in small incision cataract surgery. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So nucleus management includes two things. One is bringing the nucleus out of the bag. And the next is delivering the nucleus. Through hydro dissection or using Chinsky hook or the cannula. Bringing the nucleus out of the bag. You do hydro dissection, one bolus and usually it comes out. You rotate with the cannula or Chinsky. Here is another. Go behind the anterior capsule, lift the capsule, go behind 1.5 millimeter and give a bolus. Nucleus comes out from the other side, like in this video. 
Here is again, this is a hypermature cataract. You put a bolus and nucleus comes out from the other side. Again, hydrodissection. You give a cortical cleavage hydrodissection. Put again next bolus and nucleus comes out of the back. Using Sinsky hooks or cannula, hydrodissection is done. Same cannula is taken at 3 o'clock behind the rexis margin and nucleus is hooked and prolapsed out. Here you see, we go behind the nucleus, hooked it and rotate. It comes out. First you do hydrodissection. Large bolus, if it doesn't come out, go with the Sinsky hook, 3 o'clock, just hook it and rotate. Nucleus comes out easily. Use lot of, lot of viscoelastic. After delivering, delivering nucleus in the anterior chamber, put viscoelastic above and behind the nucleus. Here is delivering nucleus out. There are so many techniques using vibetes, sandwich technique, blue menthol, visco expression, irrigating vectors, using sandwich techniques, snare techniques, etc. etc. I'm showing few of them here. This is using wire vectors. Go behind and bring the nucleus out. Sandwich technique, this is very common and most important technique. After hydro dissection, put the viscoelastic behind and anterior to the nucleus. Put wire vectors below and Sinsky hook above the nucleus. Here you can see we are going with the wire vectors and Sinsky hook. Wire vectors going behind nucleus, press and withdraws gently. It comes out and you always keep yourself away from the cornea. This is the best technique I use. Then again sandwich technique. Lubenthal technique. Here a can, irrigation cannula is fixed at 8 o'clock. Using irrigation from this cannula, anti chamber is formed. Nucleus is prolapsed out and brought into the near the incision. By pressing the lower lip, nucleus comes out. Here you can see, it's so easy. Visco expression, in this you put viscoelastic behind the nucleus and nucleus floats out easily. If it doesn't come out, then again put some viscoelastic behind the nucleus. This was expression by viscoelastic. Now irrigating vectors. Here you put irrigating vectors and bring the nucleus out, sitting on top of it. using cannula only. Any cannula can be used. There is no specific cannula for this. This is the same plain hydrodissection cannula and you can bring out the nucleus without any special cannula. Sandwich phaco fracture. When nucleus is large, we fracture the nucleus in two parts. One part has been removed and now you rotate the nucleus 90 degree. And again, you use since wire vectors and Sinsky hook to bring this nucleus piece out of the anterior chamber. Here, it's so easy. So whatever you do, please keep yourself away from the cornea and posterior capsule. Best technique is one which gives you best result. Thank you very much. Very nicely presented, Dr. Vipin Sani, sir. Obviously, it's a true that uh, we have to deliver the nucleus twice. One is uh, we have to deliver it from the uh, outside, in the inside the chamber, from the back. So that is very important. And then after that, after delivering it in the antechamber, then we have to take it out to the uh, 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 Dr. Sahani. Sir. Dr. Sahani, uh, can you listen to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you uh, you are uh, showing the technique of delivering the nucleus into the from the back out. Okay. Yes, sir. Suppose you're uh, sometimes you had a very hard cataract and uh, your CCC is small. Then yeah. what uh, uh, would you like to do? 
we can giving the relaxing incision into the ccc or comma shaped incision in ccc we can give, give it in 3 o'clock position and 7 o'clock position and then again same technique hydro dissection or using sinski or canla you bring the nucleus out in those very hard cataract it is very difficult to do the hydro uh, dissection completely but even then if you are doing uh, i mean relaxing incision of the atrium why not to go for uh, uh, can opening yeah we can use can opener but uh, actually i learned fake before then the sics so the technique of rexis has come into the mind and there are definite benefits of rexis yes yes if there are problem that comes then you can always do the implantation of lens over the anti capsule so that is the definite benefit so we yes, always yes. go for the rexis only sir so, uh, sir so, i also i, I also um, Uh, agree with the Dr. Pavel Ani sir's uh, statement because making a rexis is always uh, good because we have less uh, acute angles. Because if we are making acute uh, can opener, we are creating lot of acute angles and doing manipulations of uh, nucleus. Uh, one of the two, one of any acute may extend towards the periphery, and the complications of posterior capsular involvement might be more in, in cases of with the uh, uh, can opener. so it is always uh, yes, yes. better to make a big size rexis and if you think that the size of rexis is not sufficient uh, we can make uh, two or three relaxing incision and then we can manipulate the nucleus out uh, from the bag and after that we can deliver it out and obviously the uh, rexis is the biggest invention in the cataract surgery because uh, without rexis we cannot think about doing even fako or even uh, fake uh, in uh, during sics if we big make a big rexis we can uh, do better because dr amul sir has already said uh, spoken about that uh, he's doing uh, um, multiple iwells and uh, and even yes, uh, yes. getting a uh, iwell we have to have a central uh, rexis so rexis is very yes. important and uh, next talk is uh, uh, the obviously the making of a good rexis, rexis. <laughs> dr neelima yes. malhotra is the next speaker so i'll yes. request dr neelima to start uh, her presentation can you all hear me yes yeah. ma'am yes 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 <laughs> we have already had some discussion over um, the rexis so i'd like to give a very small um, presentation here Uh, the installation of the UP chapter um, of uh, ISM SICS, and let us all work together. As uh, Sumi Stalwarts in the thing has have just uh, inspired us, and um, uh, they they will be there to support us and guide us. So let us uh, make it a good society in UP as well. And uh, now just talking about the capsular access. i am neelima herotra from bareilly srms medical college so as surgeons all of us are um, always in look for small incisions for whatever surgery we may do so whether it is fako or whether it is manual small incision cataract surgery um to make a small incision cataract surgery work well i think rexis is one of the very very important aspects after wound construction on of course later things that come you cannot avoid anything but let us talk about rexis over here and let us about the talk about the continuous curvilinear capsular rexis which goes round and round if it if goes round nicely everything is merry it is like a merry go round so your rexis should consistently be well centered to make a well centered rexis what our um, teachers for uh, fako or during sics have been teaching us is that follow the margins of the pupil so if you follow the pupillary margin you know exactly how distant you have to be from it and so you can go around and take your rexis to make it a well centered rexis which is going to help your lens be well centered as well we've been just talking about uh, multifocal lenses so centration is really important not even only with multifocal even with the monofocal lenses 
the soft shell technique still helps a lot i always wish you use your cohesive viscoelastics to make the anterior capsule as flat as possible so that your nick doesn't extend towards the equator or even beyond and your dispersive will obviously take care of the endothelium the one of the best things that the rexes has to offer us as dr sudhir was only just saying that we got this rexes as a very very good um, improvement which has uh, enabled faco to be done and sics to be done so is that the strength of the thing as compared to can opener or the envelope type of rexes uh, the capsule of it we were doing earlier so it is strong so you can do your hydro procedures confidently you can manage the nucleus whether it is by faco or by prolapsing the nucleus out in sics you when you do your in, um, aspiration of the cortex you are not scared that you might be pulling on one of the capsular tags if your rexus is good and you can do your uh, pushing on the under surface of the anterior capsule also with a lot of confidence the rexus is also generally of a made of a size so that it overlaps the optic of the intraocular lens which we will implant this will also prevent will not only stabilize the lens but also prevent any pco to happen later on uh, one of the things we need is sometimes very good visibility so most of us are doing rexes without any use of staining the capsule unless it is a white cataract or some other difficulties but uh, beginners may use trypan blue in almost every case that is all right but generally come to understand that when you getting a good reflex from behind you don't need the dye then uh, because femto second laser is there in faco so i wanted to talk about femto rex just a word there is still those micro um, radial cuts which may cause extension i am i'm not doing fem femto um, faco so i wouldn't know apart from what the literature said so this is how you do your rex is if you see the picture number 1 you make a puncture in the center near the center and take it towards the periphery as half as much as the diameter you want or the radius of the rexus um, that you would want after that just use your cystitome to put the flap uh, to avert the flap of the anterior capsule so that you can pull on it and by your shearing forces take the capsule round and round as i told you earlier it's a good thing to take it um, to follow the pupillary margin so it gives you a uh, circular and well centered rexus so you take it all around and in the last picture you can see that there is a good rexus with an eye wall inside the bag this is a video of a rexus in um immature cataract it's only a um, few second video you can see this is the initial cut and the cystitome is being used to hold the flap of the capsule and now it is being taken all around so you keep you do the shearing as well as a little ripping of the capsule you keep the pressure or the pull inwards or the centripetal or towards the center so that your rexus does not run away to the periphery or outwards so you see it's rexus when you get used to it it takes a little bit of time it's something like your signature and you know when you start making your signature you just subconsciously do it so it takes very few seconds this is another um, video this is um, another one this is another one minute video which is of a white cataract i just want to show you the rexus so those though this is a um, clear corneal incision faco surgery that uh, you can see i have used trypan blue so we use trypan blue for white cataracts it's very commonly and um, the patient is under topical anesthesia so you can see moving around a bit this is intracameral um, elignocaine which i have used and as i told you the soft shell technique i put in a little bit of sodium hyaluronate and you can see that to be followed by hpmc so you, uh, this is this really works well especially in white cataracts or in hypermature cataracts where you would expect your rexus to run away and all of us hate that argentine flag sign so much and this is the cystitome that goes in we make a nick in the center luckily for me in this case there was not too much of um, fluid cortex coming out you can see i suppose you can see the same capsule folded on folded on itself and the rexus 
going on well enough in uh, mature and hypermature cataracts it would be a good idea to aim for a slightly smaller rexus and we have already just discussed that sometimes if the rexus is too small you might make a relaxing incision in my case i make relaxing incisions very rarely and that too uh, at 12 o'clock so what are the problems you know everything cannot be merry it cannot be even if it is round it could be merry go round so one of the problems is the steep learning curve but once you have mastered rexus then um, you know you're you're almost halfway there so you can you can be really good but if your rexus is small then your collapsing of your nucleus would be a problem please give a nick a very small relaxing incision at 12 o'clock that is because later on you don't have to take your simco very commonly at 12 o'clock so holding the collapse of the capsule is a little less likely if the rex is too large you may dislocate the iol from the back so don't uh, make, we do make a slightly larger rex is in sics then we make in preco because we want the nucleus to be collapsed out but keep in mind that you want your lens to remain stable in that if uh, your, of course your visual, visual visualization should be good so you use your dye if you need so we all know about uh, zepto capsulorexis devices also they it has a um, suction cup and a uh, titanium and nickel ring and it takes only 4 minutes seconds to do the whole rexis at one go simultaneously it is all 360 degree done at one time and you when you release the ring uh, there is some bss which goes in so it gives a little hydro dissolution as well and i believe zepto would be good in of its cases like uh, hypermature cataracts maybe pediatric cataracts or then if there are all glomerular disorders and if you use them in your routine cases also perhaps you could lessen your surgical time and center more on the visual axis without talking about tan or uh, capsulotomy uh, i would like to here uh, bring your attention that this has been the capsulotomy we have been doing earlier we, which we learned initially and with ecc and it's a very beautiful capsule capsulotomy so we don't do it much nowadays but if you uh, lose your rexis somewhere you have some margin of rexis rest you can complete by capsulotomy by the can opener side so you just keep making small punctures and in the end here you see what it looks like but this is actually an illustration and to a little exaggeration that it doesn't look as zigzag as that envelope is what we used to do for white cataracts before we started using the dye so liberally so just make a slit or a linear opening and after everything is done what i generally do is i use vanas to cut a little part from one of the ends of the linear hold it by your uh, utrata or macpherson forceps and take it around to open the center of the anterior capsule so that your visual axis is clear so thank you for all these uh, lines which go round and round and make us feel happy as well and um, that's all about this presentation and once again uh, let me congratulate the team of up and uh, dr mk singh sir dharmina sir <coughs> deepak dr sudhir all of us let's um, make this thing more regular more good meetings and uh, bring it forward thank you very much Thank you, Dr. Nirma. It was a very good talk and okay. very useful. Yes, sir. Please. See, Rexis two points. Uh, I want all of you to practice now. The Rexis, you try to uh, make it a oval Rexis instead of uh, sticking to round Rexis. A oval Rexis will solve many of your problem because we can dislodge the lens easily and bring it out. One more point is that that when you have a softer the cataract make a larger the lexis so we should not stick to those dogmas that uh, it should be around and it should be for a higher hard lenses you should have a bigger lexis no for soft lens you make a big lexis otherwise it will fragment inside and you will have a lot of problem third point is that when you the lexis slips out it is because of the zonula stretching there so you press the sclera on that point and uh, just put your uh, little that uh, sister tomb there and uh, in the center of the uh, angle and try to turn it uh, if you are not going through the side port avoid that come back to the main port and then at 12 o'clock or wherever your entry point from there you can maneuver it much better 
all the time keep it in mind that you know viscoelastic should be there you need not put all this high high vis and all that sort of things is not necessary because high vis they comes out in a bolus so dispersible viscoelastic is good for us so stick to that these are few points all of you should do try to master oval axis and it will solve a lot of problem thank you sir next speaker is dr sudhir vastav over to dr sudhir vastav my slides are visible yes please yes sir Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, I must convey thanks to the main officer and especially Deepak uh, for having me here. And it's a great day for uh, UP, and uh, it's important day because uh, today is the installation ceremony of a uh, ISM, uh, the UP chapter of uh, ISM as ICS. And uh, I think three days back, uh, Dr. Deepak has uh, called me and that he has given me that you have to speak on as ICS, and then I. that uh, because i am not a uh, regular sics surgeon because uh, i learned feco and i am doing uh, feco practice uh, for the last 22 23 years so i thought what to do now then uh, i realized that it is a very important topic to speak because sometime when when you, you are in trouble then this is the technique which i came out uh, and uh, uh, in difficult cases where the feco was not possible i managed uh, through this sics so it uh, this technique has lot of respect in my uh, heart so i decided and i modified the topic which dr deepak has given me and uh, i made uh, the presentation in that way that uh, at the feco surgeon because uh, to become a accomplished feco surgeon we have to learn other modalities that, and like uh, dr amul has uh, sir has already spoken about that we must know other modalities and if you want to be a good cataract surgeon because being a feco surgeon is not a heroic thing so uh, because uh, you know there are so many other qualities and uh, personally i think I, i feel fortunate to be from that era where i learned I, icc uh, intracapsular cataract surgery in uh, our camps during our residency postings then in residency i learned extracapsular surgery cataract surgery where we just delivered out the nucleus and uh, we uh, in, started the implanting lenses then uh, in during my feco training during my fellowship and my practice i learned feco emulsification and after learning all those uh, three modalities i learned small incision cataract surgery because uh, where the feco is not possible uh, if you are not aware about the ics uh, you have only cho one choice that you you have to do ecc and the problems with ecc is the large incision and we have to suture it and astigmatism was the big challenge so although the feco emulsification the gold standard for cataract surgery but we cannot perform feco in each and every cases obviously with the hard nucleus where the cataract is black the cornea is compromised there is a, a, a uncooperative patient and obviously if we are uh, talking about the economics and if we want to do uh, community practice just to cut down the cost of surgery just to cut down the infra, the amount of infrastructure involvement then the, definitely this is the technique which we all must uh, learn as a feco surgeon so the brief history about sics uh, this tunnel incision came in existence just to counter the uh, astigmatism which was there with the ecc surgeries because of the suturing and uh, the concept was given by richard lards uh, in 1983 then the few other names like girard and hoffman in 1984 uh, they have they were the pioneer to call posterior incision as a scleral incision jack a singer in 1991 has given the first time he has given the concept of tron incision to reduce uh, further reduce the amount of astigmatism created by the scleral tunnel incision then paul e ernst and introduced the concept of the triplanar incisions so this is video where cataract was around black uh, around 5 6 uh, uh, of uh, intensity i made a small big incision by, because my target was not to uh, give a small incision here i have given very large scleral tunnel incision i did very large rexes uh, dr amuli has said that uh, even a smaller cataract the, the softer cataract you have to make a larger rexes uh, but for uh, cataract like uh, 
grade six plus we have to make a large access because we have to prolapse the nucleus out uh, from the bag so i did hydro dissection and the two, two instruments i prolapsed the nucleus out and with the visco technique i extra delivered the nucleus out and uh, i do to introduce any other further instruments like uh, my practice or sort of, sort of other things or uh, uh, the sandwich technique which uh, dr pinsani has already spoken about because uh, these uh, in the uh, harder cataracts the capsules are weak, are also weak so it is always easier to just express the nucleus out with the plastics i sutured the incision and i created 2.2 mm incision for uh, because i am veco surgeon i am always comfortable to do my irrigation expression uh, with the my ia tip so with 2.2 mm extra in, uh, another incision i aspirated the cortical matter because it uh, if you are creating another port you are giving less stress on the Uh, iris and iris prolapse is less uh, common with 2.2 mm incision another here the patient was having compromised cornea along with very hard nucleus and pupil was also not very well dilated after staining the capsule with tapon blue again i deliberately tried to make a, a large capsular excess and here i made a frown incision but again the size of incision was big because i am not a very Uh, accustomed about the small incision uh, cataract surgery i'm not perfect uh, as i see a surgeon here i again created to uh, relaxing incision for easy uh, delivery of nucleus from the bag and with the visco tech again i delivered the nucleus out sutured the incision because suturing of your incision reduces the amount of astigmatism and here i implanted hydrophobic most of the time whenever i am doing as i see as i always keep hydro um, the pmma lenses but they uh, the pmma lenses they do well uh, in such in such cases because because they uh, stay quietly in the uh, sulcus area keeping a hydrophobic lens in, uh, implant in the sulcus is not good idea but here i implanted because i was sure about the uh, that i can implant the i will in the bag so i implanted hydrophobic here and covered uh, uh, incision with the conjunct tab so if uh, if you want to be an accomplished faco surgeon uh, we have to learn other modalities of cataract surgery and sics learning sics is very important because this is the main uh, rescue here for uh, the faco surgeons thank you very much sir dr sudhir you have got wonderful video and try to increase more videos so if we can take you in many forums So that okay, all sir. the uh, students would get converted. Sir, Sudhir, Sudhir is the leading Peku and the Peku surgeon UP, and I am happy to see him doing the SIC surgery because I have always seen doing the Peku in the last surgery as well. So, Sudhir, you have done a great job. But for a SIC surgeon, what we do is try never to extend the lessons by giving this uh, lessing season. If you are giving Big enough assist. Yes, it is it is good enough to take out the nucleus out of it. But wonderful, Sajjia, we are really proud of you. You are with us, joining this society. Thank you very much. <laughs> actually, doctor, actually, Doctor Sudhir, what I was expecting from you that when you stuck when you are doing the FACO, then how to convert yourself into the SICS? I was expecting this kind of video from you. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> sir and, and Doctor Arvind, I want to add one thing. Yeah, because converting a key uh, from FACO to ECC or SICS is not a good idea because it is always your sense. So after 22 or 23 years of your practice, you develop that sense that this case is not good case for FACO. Yes, yes, directly, I do. You, I do. do yes, I do understand. But uh, for the beginners, I just want to say that if he was stuck when you, it is a hard. cataract and sometimes they are very good uh, brown cataracts and they just very hard from inside from the core and once you do it and you chop you are not able to do it and you are just doing the surgery round and round and the, and the pieces they are just muggling and they are not coming to try to come out then that time you have to extend uh, you have to think about the sics 
So, because uh, sometimes it so happens, not always, but sometimes when the experience is in, uh, that, that too happen. Because uh, this is what my idea is, when I see a brown heart cataract or when it is a cataract Niagara, I don't dare to give the pass the FACO energy into the, um, into the anti chamber. At the right. moment I, I, I want to do that, then I have to be, okay, I, I do it, I can convert it. So this is the situation that, that where you need really SICS, how to convert your FACO into SICS. And of course, uh, SICS surgeons can convert into FACO. So it is very important to convert FACO surgeons into SICS when they, they land up in certain and grave situations. Anyway, uh, thank you, Dr. Sudhir. Uh, we are very proud of uh, you that you are uh, with us. You, your uh, dynamism with us, your knowledge is with us, and that definitely our team will be empowered by you, having you. Very Two foreign speakers are there. Uh, 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 Dr. Hana, can you listen me? Dr. Hana? Okay, I am here. Yes, 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 yes. I just tell uh, Dr. Hana, yes, yes, nice, see you, good evening. Okay, good evening, okay. Uh, my Welcome. every, uh, Dr. Amulya Sahu is there, Dr. Uh, Satan Sumathur is there, he's just in the, I mean, you can see him very nicely with the uh, OT kit. He's always, every time he's in the OT, and uh, <laughs> Dr. Boramani, J. Boramani is there just uh, uh, near to you. And they are the key, key people of the society. This is, uh, I, this is International Society of Manual uh, Small Incision Cataract Surgery. And Dr. M. M. K. Singh is here. And he is uh, uh, now, right now, the UP chapter chairman. And uh, I am also there. My the ch other team members are also there. Dr. Anil Srivastava is there. And Dr. Sudhir Srivastava there. You can read the names, all of them. All of them, and just I invite you, uh, Dr. Hana. I just invite you for your topic. The idea about uh, brought from India to Poland. I don't know what uh, idea you bought from here. That was the DME steroid off-label uh, treatment. Uh, treatment. So you uh, you are invited for your talk. Please carry on. Hana, Hana, I one minute before yes, you yes. start. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, do you have any person operating SICS in your country? Uh, pardon, I, ha I haven't understood you, uh, so uh, if do, I... Do, does any eye surgeon do MSICS in your country? Uh, you have uh, asked me if uh, any, uh, if any uh, what kind of surgery do we provide or what? This is manual small incision cataract surgery, MSICS. Ah, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, uh, Actually, the most popular uh, po uh, technique is rather phacoemulsification, and it is uh, uh, done for more than 20 years. So small incision cataracts probably are not performed in, uh, in Poland uh, anymore, as mm. far as I know, yes? But, but, uh, but in India, we are all surgeons and we are doing MSICS. So it's uh, absolutely 100% phacoemulsification are doing... 100% SICS. Okay, so, so I think that the uh, Poland, of, Poland, of, Poland economy is not that big. So why can't people learn MSICS? Okay. The, <laughs> I so think I, that, I think I, I will start it with you. Yes, so um, many young, uh, many, many young sergeants uh, in Poland uh, who visited India just to start uh, uh, start uh, uh, beginning when? with cataract surgery, and most of them probably at the beginning of their career uh, uh, have uh, used to to do it. Uh, I am not a, a person because uh, I, uh, uh, I I am an uh, ophthalmologist uh, for 30 years, so I started with ICCE and then ECCE, and then I jump uh, directly to phacoemulsification. Yes, but and now now, now I, we will bridge that gap. Yes, now we will so, bridge yes. that gap. Okay, so I, I miss it, yes. I, I know as now as a little bit more experienced person that even the odd or more simpler technique 
can be very useful in a, a hand of even experienced one person, yes? Yes. Yep. So I missed maybe, and even I was taught always to do a corneal, a, a corneal incision, not a pleural one, yes? So I'm, if I uh, haven't, uh, because I haven't been taught it, yes, I, I miss it even, yes? But in uh, Poland, uh, Hannah, in yes. Poland, there is a place, uh, Kalish. You know the Kalish? Yes, I know. Okay. Uh, yes, I know. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You must be knowing that Kalish, the Kalish, Dr. Thomas is there. He's yes. performing uh, this MSICS uh, technique. Still, still. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. So you, Professor, even better know what, what yes. is in Poland rather than me. Yes? <laughs> but I, think He's that doing. That, uh, I think that it is extraordinary, yes, a case. And, uh, it depends uh, on the person and the uh, experience, yes? Yes, yes, yes. So, he, so I he's, a, that... he's a good FECO surgeon, refractive surgeon, uh, and uh, he is also doing the SICS because in Poland, is that is, there are certain cases they are lying, because in Poland, what I personally feel, that most of the cases, they are uh, from the insurance side, and they keep on waiting, waiting, and uh, they don't get the number so easily, and the cat get mature and mature and mature. So uh -huh. that's why sometimes they require also the some alternative procedure and SICs is the best. So Dr. Okay. Kalish is doing from the insurance side, they're from, mm -hmm. and uh, Dr. Thomas is go, uh, doing the SICs there. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, uh, Rana, I want to ask one thing. Rana, I want to ask one thing. In Poland, you get the cataract, whether, whether you get the hard cataract, black brown cataract during your surgery time, all the cataract are soft cataract, you operate, or you get the hard cataracts also. Uh, even in Poland, we have very hard cataract, yes, even in the uh, in person who live in big cities, yes, because the people uh, actually for two years, we have been performing uh, 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 many uh, cataract because they, uh, they have been started to be paid by insurance, yes, yes. but for uh, even now, the per, uh, uh, but it was, uh, it is, right now but for uh, two years ago the people must wait for the cataract surgery many years so they yes. travel outside to the czech republic or even outside but you know the people have not many some were uh, they paid for the surgery by themselves but not everybody but now uh, our government paid for the cataract and we started to have uh, to have a lack of patience even for the person for the physician who operate only cataract not other uh, ophthalmological surgeries so it is a second side of the moon yes, yes. Uh, so now uh, we are happy uh, because i can even i search uh, for the person who want to be uh, to be operated for the cataract of course yes for other uh, other procedure you know the money uh, rules the world, yes, and the money push us to uh, operate, uh, and also it depends on how much you you are paid for the technique you perform privately or on the uh, basis on the uh, of the hospitals paid by our government, yes. So I so I think that we are happy now because Poland started to to be in a better side of the world, yes, and we have uh, much more. Uh, money for the new technique and new materials, yes, in comparison uh, 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 for the time in 90s, yes, when, uh, when I started to be an ophthalmologist, yes. So uh, even now I can easily uh, transform to the extra cataract uh, extraction, yes, because I was experienced in such tech technique, yes. So uh, my experience uh, is also now uh, uh, is uh, enable me just to be an uh, efficient uh, vitro retinal surgeon. Actually, I operate more retina, like uh, as uh, rather than only cataract. Yes, and for me, uh, probably they are sent many persons who invited combined procedure. Therefore, so I I think that from from each technique. Uh, uh, which uh, uh, surgeon knows, yes, uh, can, uh, uh, we can make an advantage, yes, to, to do it in a special uh, person, especially okay. with complicated yeah. uh, uh, cases.
Thank you, Dr. Uh, Hana. Can you start your talk, please? Okay, so I try to, okay, sorry, because I am very <laughs> proud and happy that I was invited. I am a little bit shy because I have not enough time to be, to be prepared for this presentation. Anyway. Uh, but, I, um, uh, but I have an, an luck because uh, uh, even if my uh, pen drive with, uh, with my bank, with my presentation, uh, was uh, um, uh, <clears throat> to be uh, out of the order, yes. Uh, I, some presentation I have presented in the past in Prezi. Uh, in Prezi. So uh, fortunately I have found one which was about uh, the steroid uh, treatment for, res for DME resistant for the other method of treatment, yes. And uh, what, was my, uh, what was this idea, yes, brought from India? Because actually in the 90s, uh, I started to uh, take care about, uh, of diabetes patients, uh, which was, uh, uh, there is plenty of them in Poland, yes, and, uh, as in another part in the world, yes. And it started to be more and more. And I realized that one of the visual, uh, 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 <clears throat> visual dist disturbance in such person is uh, diabetic macular edema, which were not effective to be treated uh, with laser photocoagulation. And uh, in the 90s, it was uh, revealed in the world that steroid intravitreal injections are uh, good for such person. But uh, most of the uh, drug are with conservative one, and it was a Kenalog, which was uh, available in Poland and in Europe, yes. But uh, the, 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 the problem was the endophthalmitis because of this conservative materials inside this drug. So when I visited India in 2005, I realized that you in India had preservative-free uh, formula, that it, it was called Aurocord, yes. And as I uh, showed, shown, uh, realized, so I brought some ampules uh, to Poland, and then even I ordered it for some years. And I started giving it to person with, uh, the, with DME resistant because it was even before uh, anti-VEGF uh, treatment was administered also in diabetic pe person, yes? Uh, and actually in Poland, not in Europe, in uh, another uh, uh, West, uh, West uh, European countries, only four million, four or, uh, eight milligram of uh, tramsinolon was uh, was injected into the eye, but I uh, wrote uh, the uh, paper from Professor Jonas and realized that if I um, put to the eye even 20 milligram, it is possible up to 25 milligram of tramsinolon to the uh, uh, to the eye. Uh, I don't uh, aggravate the risk, but prolong the effectiveness of this drug. And I started to put 20 milligrams, so I divide an ample of this Aurocord in two, for two persons. And I divide it and then centrifugated the, uh, the, the drug uh, uh, taken to the syringe and uh, then uh, <clears throat> uh, put out uh, some uh, uh, solvent and only uh, in a volume of 0 0.1 milliliter, which uh, contain, contains 20 milligram, it is uh, possible just to put it into the inside the eye, which is not vitrectomized. Uh, and this has uh, 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 short survey of some study which was performed between 2006 and 2009, yes, uh, in 120 person, yes, most, not the this, this same number of uh, um, uh, wom wo women and men, you see that uh, the population of, of, of the study, mostly with type 2 diabetes, age, uh, average in about uh, 60 years. Uh, 
duration of diabetes was variable from one to 39 years, yes? And these are the results of this survey, survey about the, uh, from the, uh, uh, this, uh, from the, uh, uh, in uh, best corrected visual acuity, distance, and uh, also for, for reading, uh, in time uh, uh, between one week and six months after the injection, yes? And in, in my study group, I have shown that it is actual uh, improvement, yes, in, be, uh, in best corrected visual, visual acuity, which lasted up to six months, yes? Uh, and in... Uh, uh, most of the patients, the uh, drug uh, stopped to be effective after after six months. So um, I, I should, I in some per person, I should repeat the injection in six months. Yes. So uh, I uh, my patients started to be happy because even if the initial pretreatment visual acuity. Uh, was below 0 0.1, they started just to have a better visual acuity, which was very, uh, uh, which enables to, uh, to, to provide normal life for them, yes, because even the, the, with a very diffuse macular edema, yes, the visual acuity was below 0 0.1, yes, so they cannot treat any time, they cannot uh, inject the proper amount of insulin each time, yes, so uh, the person started to be very happy, yes. And also the, uh, the central macular thickness, as you uh, see here, yes, uh, started after the injections to, allow, to be lower, yes, uh, and uh, the uh, recurrence of the edema started to be after six months. So, so 20 milligram from uh, uh, milligram of tramsinolone uh, revealed to be effective and safe in uh, this uh, group of persons. Uh, what was the intraocular pressure? Because I saw such a um, result presented also in one EVRS meeting in, this, uh, in uh, Dresden. It was in 2020. It is a society uh, from doctors which um, treat the uh, retina on a private basis in Europe and also outside. Yes. So I have um, talked to this audience that uh, the word uh, doesn't uh, contain only, uh, uh, doesn't uh, have only the person who are uh, so rich that can uh, treat uh, the uh, DNA uh, with uh, Ozurdex and uh, even Illuvian later on, yes. Uh, for the recurrent, uh, 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 for the resistant DNA, but we, we can propose some treatment for the person who can uh, be also treated with uh, a low budget. Uh, so such uh, Aurocorp I have uh, ordered it, uh, from India, so it was uh, uh, not so expensive, and nowadays I have a new formula uh, in, uh, also ad, uh, available in Europe because in Italy they started to produce uh, the uh, vitreal. I have, sh I will show, show you something. Uh, I will show you the, uh, the picture of something uh, of the vitreal. So it is, oh, this is the, uh, mm -hmm. So this is a drug available now in Europe, but it is uh, not a, a drug because he is registered just for the di for, for dying of the vitreous uh, during the surgery. But it is also a conservative free, and the substance inside is a transinolone. So uh, for many years now, I use it just dividing this up for four person, yes, uh, and uh, and then I will put it for the for the uh, group of four people so one ampoule for four people and it uh, costed um, 
actually how much it is. So it is uh, ever, it is for, it is like uh, for uh, 40 slot, uh, uh, for, for 40 euro. So 10 euro per person is a cost for, for such person, uh, for, for, for such drug. Uh, important now. So it started to be available. It is not very popular because the people and surgeons in Poland are not very, uh, they don't like to have risk, but uh, my opinion is no risk, no fun. Yes. So if I can, so, uh, but I am happy because I uh, work in the university clinic. So we, uh, we provide it uh, for the patients in short, uh, in short yes, for the, for, and it is the uni clinic, university clinic. So I have, I have no fear that anybody would like to uh, say me that I, 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 I uh, don't do it, uh, not accordingly the rule, yes. And, I, and uh, after, uh, after I was very happy because uh, after such meeting in Dresden, I also realized that also I met the, me, met the doctor from United States, uh, from Detroit, and he presented also the problem that some tramsinolone is also given in United States in per, uh, for person who cannot uh, by the more expensive register it uh, for the uh, officially for the DME uh, also. So yeah, we are not an, uh, the only person who, who, who do it. Uh, and I can also say that uh, that it is uh, mm -hmm. that it is uh, uh, safe and the uh, the so I can. Uh, the IOP, the IOP, because not only the cataract, which is more progressive after a steroid injection, is a problem, but also because cataract can be easily operated. Yes, so it is now not a problem, but the problem is the increase in IOP, secondary glaucoma. So. So, uh, in my uh, in my survey, uh, I uh, have indicated. Uh, was not the problem uh, because uh, most the IOP increase was uh, uh, between two or uh, three months after the injection of such uh, volume of, um, uh, of, of tramsinolone. And the success rate of the trapeculectomy uh, of the eyes, uh, oh, here, uh, here is this uh, good slide, yes, who present that the, uh, uh, that the biggest increase in IOP is after uh, between second and uh, third month after the injection. But if the, in, in some person the trabeculectomy is needed, so, uh, but uh, the success rate after the, the trabeculectomy, even if in some patients, uh, was good, yes. But if the case of cataract progression after intravitreal tramsinolone injections uh, develop, uh, it is very necessary to remember that we can uh, repeat uh, OCT uh, directly before operation and uh, just uh, consider if combined procedure, phacoemulsification with repeated intravitreal tramsinolone uh, injections should be employed, yes? Because we can always uh, keep in mind that, that, that the recurrence of a DME is uh, after six months is very uh, possible is so we can consider the combined uh, procedure and uh, according to the uh, euretina because normally the, we uh, we um, treat the uh, uh, diabetic macular edema with anti-VEG injections but the problem is also money because we have not a, a, a special program paid by our insurance, yes? 
and the person can, uh, uh, can uh, of course, pay for the uh, rec uh, uh, recurrent um, injection of a registered anti-VEGF drug, ILEA or uh, Lucentis, yes. But it is a very um, uh, is is uh, too expensive uh, for them. Uh, so usually, uh, even even, even uh, the recommendation for Euretina. So this is the European uh, Society uh, of uh, Retina specialists uh, admit uh, the use of steroid as a uh, as a press drug uh, therapy for the person who are not able to, uh, who, are, uh, who are not uh, possible to pay for the registered drug. Uh, so uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can also uh, use such amount of transinolone uh, for the, for such first use, yes, and you see that uh, even if uh, anti VEGF drug uh, is uh, also only uh, block the VEGF receptor, and it is only uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, parts uh, of the uh, effectiveness of cortico corticosteroids. Uh, and the corticosteroids uh, act uh, in a multiple uh, uh, multiple mechanism. Uh, so they, they uh, from basic uh, point of view, they are they are most effective. So if the person doesn't uh, uh, respond to anti VEGF treatment, corticosteroids can be also. Uh, use because uh, they uh, they are most effective, and also I am uh, against the uh, against the uh, vitrectomy, uh, which actually uh, is also proposed to be as a kind of treatment for DNA because uh, it uh, rather act uh, just shorten the uh, uh, <coughs> the. Uh, time of acting of corticosteroids, so the the time of uh, uh, effective uh, uh, activity uh, in a uh, vitrectomized eye is uh, shortened. So I rather because uh, because there is no vitus anymore after vitrectomy. So so therefore and for the person is uh, very important that uh, the intravitreal injections can be uh, is is needed only uh, one in half a year or one uh, in one month yes because from the economic point of view and also because of the safety yes so uh, dr hana uh, can you summarize okay so I just only propose just uh, think good about corticosteroids that they are ma ma uh, rather our friends, rather not an enemy. And uh, please, it is like a knife. Yes, the knife is good for uh, for cutting the uh, for cutting the uh, bread, but it can be uh, used should be used very cautiously. Yes. Uh, and it is, and the, so I, uh, I, I think, remember that uh, we can also use tramsinolone as uh, the uh, not registered uh, uh, drug for DME person. Probably the most of them are the, the most of the patients who have also in your office. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice talk you have given. Uh that uh, we can we can use the translon acetate and orocort you have uh, you are in use with the orocort and dme resistant in cases very nice and very impressive talk thank you very much dr hana and uh, dr you. sudhir srivastava do you have anything to ask uh, yeah. Uh, Dr. Hana, do you have any comparison between this use of uh, steroid or uh, the we are using non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs prior to the surgery? Do you want to add something? Uh, 
uh, what what kind of drug do you use? Not steroid, uh, not uh, steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Yeah, like nepefenic. But for the intravitreal uh, injection. In no, no. Because in India, yeah, in India, basically we are doing we whenever we are dealing with the cases of diabetic retinopathy or any patient with some vascular uh, episodes in the past, like. Uh, 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 branch vein, retinal occlusion or sort of something. There, there we start uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs at least one week or two weeks prior to the surgery. To, and uh, if we start the medicines prior to the uh, surgery, then the chances of uh, post-operative uh, CME is quite less. So uh, do you have any experience about that? Uh, I think that it is reasonable to do such prophylaxis before cataract surgery, especially in diabetic person or other person with uveitis, because, you know, it is just because the operation is the inflammatory also uh, key, not, uh, the, the inflammation, the, the operation. So if the eye has a little uh, bigger amount of uh, inflammatory uh, agent inside because of the disease, yes, you can also make, it is reasonable to make a pro prophylaxis just using. I, I don't do it in every person, but for, for the diabetic it is good. But uh, topically, uh, this drug topically doesn't act uh, at all for the, the diabetic uh, edema, yes. So it is only prophylactic and uh, unfortunately this drug can also be a synerg uh, they, they always act as a syn synergetic <clears throat> with steroids. Thank so, you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Adakrahana, you have given a very uh, nice comments and nice talk uh, with you. Okay. And uh, next, uh, we just call our next speaker. We are running short of time. So Oscar Van Hamel is there, Dr. Oscar. Oscar? I think he lost his connection. Not sir, you can take uh, the next. Okay. So if he's not there. You will start meanwhile we are trying to connect him. Okay, okay. I just see my presentation. Can you, uh, I am on here now. Sure. Uh, Dr. Dhanmin sir, you are talking, you are talk, going to talk about some cannula which you have uh, invented. Yes, or, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. My old technique, my old trusted technique, which I, I am very uh, fond of this technique and I do it with myself and uh, my, sometimes my, my assistants, they are also doing the same thing. Can you see this now? Sir, you have to maximize your screen. It is not maximized? Not, sir. We, are, we can see your desktop only. I have done it. So you no. have to open it in your desktop first and then you have to share it. Okay. Stop sharing. Share screen. Okay, let me go where to go where I am. Uh, okay. So first I have to open here. Open it. Yeah. Here. First open on your desktop, sir, then share. This is okay? No. Yes, yes, yes. This no. is okay? Again no, it's sir. Disturbed. My app, kaha chala gaya? Double click the file. Double click the file and see. No. Who can you help, Darman, sir? Uh, I just. So minimize your zoom and then open it on your desktop. And then again, come back to Zoom and then and try to share it. Uh, wait a little, I just, 
I just open from here. In the meantime, I want to add something because uh, Dr. Neem has spoken about the making of rexes and uh, uh, creation of rexes is very important for the surgeon and as well as the SICS uh, surgeon. And especially uh, after lockdown, uh, we are getting a lot of intermittent cataracts, swollen cataracts, even uh, cataracts with the uh, glaucoma, phacomorphic and phacolytic glaucomas. So creating a rexes is uh, very difficult and uh, you have to um, uh, control it in better now way, otherwise... Is it there now? Yes, yes, yes sir. Okay. So, because Dr. Neelima has uh, um, uh, shown uh, the... Is it okay now? Cataract. Yes, sir, yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay, now, now you can... And now you can go for my slides, slides. okay? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Just wait, let me take it to the side. So now... Uh, finally, I am there with you and uh, in front of uh, uh, great stalwarts of SICS in between them, I am just speaking, Dr. Dr. Amul Shahu is there and it is just, uh, uh, just there my presentation and uh, managing hard cataract with not cannula. This is only the hard cataracts, not the soft cataract. So this is uh, how I deal with them. The aim is to high, this is a good technique for high volume surgeons. It is very low cost, less instrumentation, no or minimal damage to the endothelium, minimal astigmatism, low learning curve and pressing cornea on the day one, which is very important because most of the time what we see is in FACO, patients say, Dr. Sahib, in the morning, we didn't see the first eye. The first eye that was made was very big. It was very big. It was very big. And now it doesn't look like that. That is because just we had a little corneal edema during the FACO surgery when we deal with the heart attack. And if you switch on to your SICS, definitely there is the pristine cornea in the day one. In the morning, you see it. So this is how is, uh, the wonder of the SICS is there. And now you see this. This is the cannula. Can you see this uh, movie? So this is, can you see this movie? Yes, yes sir. Okay, so this is 23 gauge cannula with the two bands. You just see this is uh, mounted on the PFS syringe cannula and this is how we can demonstrate that uh, this is mounted on that, the PFS syringe. The, now see this, uh, the anatomy of this uh, cannula. This is 23 gauge with the two bands. First band is 1.5 millimeter away from the tip and second band is 45 millimeter, 4.5 millimeter away from the tip. Together it makes the 90 degree curve with the shaft. The tip of the cannula is blunt for the very soft cataract and the tip is bulb. Before the use, you have to mount this cannula on the PFS. The total length of the cannula is 20 millimeters. And use of the cannula in so many ways, and I don't want to go in so many of the details. Yes, now what I do is the technique is the dissection and delivery. So what, how is this the dissection is done? And it's just a short, in short, in heart cataract, hydro procedures are not so possible. So enlarge the main incision with 5.1 millimeter, 5 millimeter or 5.1 millimeter keratome. Mount the Nath cannula on the visco PFS. Slide the cannula on the top of the anterior surface of the nucleus. The tip of the cannula is taken towards the equator. Now, listen it very carefully. Okay, the tip of the cannula is taken towards the equator and then the rim, rim of the, uh, from the equator, the, uh, the rim of the nucleus is lifted. It makes the cleavage between the nucleus and the posterior capsule. You push a little of the visco in the space between the capsule, between the nucleus and the posterior capsule. Nucleus is start popping up obliquely into the anterior chamber. So this is the first step is the dissection. We will go uh, later on on the video and the delivery, how it comes. In the space, bit, what the space you have maintained between the nucleus and the posterior capsule, the pass this cannula flat and rotate it 90 degree to ensure in the nucleus in the curve of the cannula. A gentle pull force applied pressing the posterior lip of the nucleus, posterior lip and the nucleus comes out leaving the behind the epinucleus at the mouth of the tunnel. It, 
It is like a mango seed delivery, which leaving the pulp and the pericarp behind. Nucleus takes the oval shape of the tunnel and looks oval. Nucleus comes out from the back to outside without distinct the anterior chamber. Now we see the videos. This is the cataract nigra. And here, can you see the video now? Can you see the yes, video? Sir. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. the tunnel Very formation much. is the same as, as we are taught by other speakers. So, and the side port is made. And one side is a big port and one side is a small one. And is the CCC is done and enlargement of the go towards the equator, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up and leave it behind. Now go again, push the viscoelastic so that the push back the push capsule goes horizontally, slide back, hook and engage it and pull it out. And this is how the cataract nigra is taken out. This is the most difficult case what we see and the IOL is implanted. And see this case also. This is a small tunnel. But the extension is big, hardly 4 millimeter. Inside this is about 5 millimeter, outside it is 4 millimeter. So just go and make a good tunnel, extend it by cutting the edges inside uh, inner lip from outside in, and then the extensions. And you see, this is how the nucleus is broken into the, into the tunnel. So don't worry, keep pushing the viscoelastic and the, this nucleus comes out without damaging the endothelium. Now you see so many videos. Visco is again injected, go round and it is taken out. Go towards the equator. This is the dissection. What I say, this is the manual dissection with the same cannula. Go behind this and take it out. So posterior capsule is saved because you have injected more and in, more and more visco behind the lens and this is how it comes out. It just, the nucleus is engaged into the curb of the cannula. When you inject the visco posteriorly, the visco comes out anteriorly also. So that gives a visco protection to the anterior anteriorly and definitely saves the endothelium. And you see the lot of ep epinucleus is left behind, which protects, which is very friendly to the endothelium and uh, saves endothelium. It is the option. This is how it comes out. So, irrigation aspiration is done, but, but the main thing is the endothelial protection. How to protect the endothelium during this procedure? So, use of the massive viscoelastic, shaft technique, of course, that helps. Epinucleus is very friendly to the endothelium. During the delivery, it stays back at the internal opening of the tunnel. Nucleus comes out from the back to outside via anterior chamber without staying there into the anterior chamber. So this is how, just see the soft shell technique, how it looks like. The, the sweeping of the visco, you can see it here. And again, see this video also, you can, you will appreciate how the visco soft shell technique works. This is how it comes out and don't allow, and see sweeping of the visco and it comes out. 
So astigmatis is more superior in incision, less in the superior temporal incision, minimal astigmatis in the temporal incision. Temporal incision is farthest from the optical axis, so least a gravitational pull force causing the less astigmatis. Complications, I have never encountered complications right now, but from the beginning, there was little complication, of course, but right now it's not there. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Can you stop your sharing screen? Yes, yes, I am stop. I am going to stop it. Yes. Is it okay? Yes. Now, yes, sir. Uh, Buramani sir, can you say anything at the end of this this webinar? Or Amulya Sahu sir, Buramani sir is there? Yeah, this was. Yeah, yes, I'm there. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, this was a wonderful presentation by various speakers. And the videos also were quite good. Even uh, Natsar's technique, I feel, is very good. It accommodates the nuclear curve. The cannula mm -hmm. exactly just surrounds the yeah, nucleus yeah. and picks it up with the pressure yeah. in the sclerotic tunnel. So, and you already have quoted the visco, so there is no pressure on the endothelium. And all the pressure is burned by the sclerotic tunnel. So, either the cannula takes out the nucleus totally, Yes, yes. Or it fragments the nucleus into the scleral tunnel. Yes. So I think it's a very wonderful technique. First, you push the posterior capsule behind with the viscoelastics, then hook the nucleus with the same cannula and take out. Yes. So yes. it's a, I think it's a very simple technique. Very simple. Master, very simple technique. Master, wonderful technique. All other speakers also had a very good talk. Uh, so I think uh, UP chapter will do a wonderful job in the next two years. Let us see. With your guide, under your guidance, definitely. Sao, sir, your voice, why to join ISMS, ICS? One yeah, message yeah. from you. <laughs> As I told you that the UP chapter has got all the luminaries there and uh, we are very academically, all are well placed and they will, will do a wonderful job. And uh, I think they are, uh, the chapter is in the safe hands. So look forward to more uh, active, uh, ac uh, active activity from your chapter. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all of you. Thank you. Thank you sir. Okay, thank bye. Professor M K Singh, sir, your final. Thank comment, you. Sir. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you for this wonderful job, and we hope that under the dynamic leadership of young persons, we will go forward along. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Uh, Dr. Thank Umar you Barma, all. Sir. Thank you. Umang Verma, sir, kindly say a quote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Deepak. Uh, this star-studded studded team of uh, International Society of Manual uh, Small Incision Cataract Surgeons is accelerating, really. And I'm very pleased that uh, on behalf of the UP chapter, I have been uh, given the responsibility to say a few words, thanking everyone. And this is in proxy for Dr. V.K. Pal. Uh, thank you so much to visionary Dr. Amulya Sahu for what you've been and the complete, complete phenomenon Dr. J. Buramani, the exuberant Dr. P. Gogate, and the splendid Dr. Satanshu Mathur, the charismatic Dr. Bhattacharya, and the stupendous Dr. Srinivas Joshi. These are the visionaries who have made it possible for us. The well-known and capable surgeon, Dr. M. K. Singh, thank you so much. The most efficient of all, Dr. Dharvendranath. Thank you everyone, very much. <laughs> everyone knows the flamboyance of Dr. Deepak Mishra, the agile Dr. Virendra Kumar Pal, and the surgeon with absolute flair. Dr. Anil Srivastava. And then we have this young man who has just celebrated his 22nd work anniversary. Dr. Thank you so much, all of you, and thank you so much, the meticulous Dr. Nilima Melotra and the electrifying personality of the East, East UP, Dr. Vipin Zani, the dynamic Dr. Jitendra Vahai, the versatile Dr. Richard Srivastava uh, and 
uh, the humble and amazing surgeon I know him personally, Dr. Lokesh Kumar Singh, the zestful Dr. Amit Kumar Patel, the spirited Dr. Sarita Garwal, the effervescent Dr. Romi Singh, the vivacious Dr. Prakash Gupta, the magnetic personality Dr. Dharmendra Singh, the enchanting Dr. R.K. Bundela, the enterprising uh, Dr. Praveen, Iram Praveen, the charming Dr. Satyam Gupta, the laudable personality Dr. Mayank Mahajan, and the passionate Dr. Manish Trivedi. I also thank the commendable speakers, Dr. Hana, who, who looks to be very dedicated. And uh, I, I, I also thank Dr. Oscar, although we were not able to see him today. And in the end, not the last or the least, the entire Entod team, who were the people behind the curtains, the team who must have strived so hard to get this thing, the act together, and how wonderfully it was uh, put up. I mean, my hats off to the team as well. And thank you so much. I see so much charisma in this new UPIS, MICS chapter executive. And I see so much uh, empowerment that we are going to get from our visionaries uh, and our uh, office bearers. And thank you so much for including me in the part of the team. And thanks on behalf of the society to all the viewers who are here. And I hope everyone had a had a beautiful evening. And let's get together and start the act. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I have never seen such Thanksgiving ceremony with the affiliation with each and every name. The separate affiliation. I have to just get in the record and see how many affiliation you have added each and every day. So uh, I am really happy to see all my I, friends in the UP here. Dr. Oman, you have to be all the, the, the Deepak just told yeah. me 10 minutes ago that uh, you have to proxy for Dr. VK Pal. I yeah. said, okay, I'll do I will, that. I will get the recording, note down all the application. I will note down all the application <laughs> to a feature. So I am very happy to see all my friends from UP here. And thanks to all. And really thanks to Deepak. Whenever UP chapter comes for either a coin, whether I think anything else, Deepak is always there to bail me out. So he has done a wonderful job. We have 180 membership mm -hmm. and we are going to crop to end up very soon. So thanks to all. Dr. Sauter, Dr. Boramani, Dr. Parishit, Dr. Shinwas from Center, come with me. We thank UP chapter for start installation ceremony for wonderful KME and we wish them good luck and we will see them growing more CMEs in future. And a special thanks to you for everything you have done today. Thank you. Thank you. Great show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And so, team, can we go offline for some time? And so, team. Thank you. So, can you take up offline? Rahul, can you just stop recording and go offline? Rahul? Rahul is not there, I think. Chiku is there. He's yeah, Chiku. He has left before us. <laughs> so, okay, goodbye, everyone. Okay. okay bye, bye bye. Bye. Bye bye to the Subir. Bye. Have you been? Bye. Goodbye. Damanath. All the good wishes. Thank bye you. bye everyone. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Okay. Good.